Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today I am picking back up on a really old series, actually one of the very first series that we put up on YouTube like six years ago when we were operating under a different legal name. Um, amongst our original series, which covered a Witch's Poisons and a Witch's Curses, we had a series called Ask a Witch, where people sent us questions um, via email, social media, etc. And myself and other witches affiliated with our organization attempted to answer them as educationally as possible. Um, we generally tried to sort of say like, look, this is how we do things, um, and each of us had our own methods. Um, whether it was Yen answering or me answering or someone else affiliated with our organization, we generally tried to present it as like, hey, this is what works for us, but you should figure out what works for you. Um, these are just options. I do have some of those videos reposted, um, especially the ones from sort of 2018, 2019. And maybe some more of them will go up, or maybe we'll re-record our answers to them now that we have a slightly better setup than we used to have. I say slightly better, we're still working on it. Um, but by request from our followers and our students and our patrons, here I am back answering questions. Uh, as always, you can email them to me, uh, staff at sanctumofthecraft.org. Um, you can leave them in the comments below. You can tell them to us on Discord. We're not picky about where the questions come from. Yeah. This question I actually got on my personal TikTok, and um, I, I had to think about it for a little bit because I don't actually agree with the ultimatum that you have to pick a side on this. Um, so basically the question was that this student kept seeing some people on TikTok argue that the only thing that matters in a spell um, or any kind of a casting was the energy and intention of the caster and that the ingredients or tools didn't matter. Um, that as long as your energy and intention was correct, then you would accomplish what you wanted to regardless of what things you tossed in a pot or held in your hand um, regardless of whether you lit a certain color candle or laid a circle a certain way, just the only thing that matters is your energy and your intention. On the other end of things, the student says, was the perspective that the only thing that mattered was the energy of your tools and your ingredients. So let's say that you had your cauldron out. The only thing that matters is what you toss into that cauldron. Um, if you have your wand, your blasting rod, your staff, that's where all of the power is coming from. It doesn't matter whether you put in any energy, whether you put in any intention. Um, and here's the thing, and I know that I drive everyone nuts with this, but both of those are valid perspectives. They're, they're both valid, and what matters is what works for you. If you are accomplishing what you want to with your castings, then stick with that. But these are different schools of thought. And to say that one is right and one is wrong, I'm just gonna say again what I always say, there is no witch pope. Like, 
No one can excommunicate you from being a witch because you don't witch the way they want you to witch. Do what works for you. Then the student asked me, okay, well, what do you do personally? Are you a what matters is your energy and intention or are you a what matters is the ingredients? And I'm sorry, but it's both. I'm both. I'm right on the middle road on this. I walk the middle path on this as I do on many things. I personally need to be in the right headspace in the right state of being in order to feel confident when casting. And if I don't feel confident, I have found that I am not particularly successful. Some of that is getting myself into the right mental space with mental exercises. Some of that may be playing the correct music or having the right kind of mood lighting. Um, but I will say that my teachers very much stressed to me that I needed to be able to do things in a state of emergency. I needed to be able to do things when I didn't have everything carefully prepared, when I wasn't in the right headspace. Um, and like my martial arts instructors, it was sort of a, well, if you can't do it when you feel like shit, then you can't really do it. Um, so. I do believe that sometimes you've got to just act even if the stars are not correctly aligned and the mood lighting is off. Uh, additionally, I do think that the tools that you use matter, but that doesn't mean that I think that you have to use anyone else's system of tools. I don't think that you need to use someone else's candle color associations in your spells. If those candle colors don't make sense to you, then it won't work for you. Uh, but I do think that the tools we use and the ingredients we use contribute their own energies to what we construct with them. And I think that they can make a job easier. Let me see if I can explain this. Technically, yes. I can go out into my garden and do everything I need to do with my bare hands. I could dig a hole, I could till the soil, I could toss my compost pile with my bare arms. Yes, technically, I'm capable of doing all of those things with just me. But we invented tools for a reason, because they aid us in the work that we are attempting to do. And before anybody says, oh, well, that means you're using a crutch, sometimes people need crutches. Ableist as fuck to say, I'm sorry, you can't ever use a tool to make anything easier on you. That makes you a bad witch. No, sorry, not, not on that page. Um, tools make things easier. They contribute to the ease with which you do things, sometimes because you can definitely overcomplicate things and have tools that are just making things harder on you. You can have the incorrect tool for your particular style of magic, or you can be badly misinformed about tools. For example, herbalism as a tool for a witch. Ooh, is there so much bad herbalism in the witchcraft community? And when we talk about tossing ingredients together to make a spell, uh, if you don't know the contraindications for that particular combination, and then you drink it or pour it over your skin or take a bath in it or, I don't know, masturbate with a wand smeared in it, seriously. <sighs> it is possible to misuse your tools. Uh, examples include crystals in water bottles that are not safe to put into water and then, and then drink that water. Uh, essential oils improperly applied to mucous membranes. Uh, dangerous misuse of entheogens. I can go on. Do I think that tools can help you? Yes. 
But like any kind of tool, whether that's a power tool that you're building something with, or a medicinal tool that you're using to address issues with your health, you need to make sure that you are making safer, saner, and risk-aware choices from an informed place. Um, so do I think that there's like a wrong way to make use of tools and magic? Yes, but it is not the way that I'm seeing everybody on TikTok say is the wrong way. All right, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, if you have any questions about my perspective, by all means, leave them in the comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe and send us other questions to answer for Ask a Witch. Sometimes it will be me, sometimes it will be someone else affiliated with our organization who answers, especially when it is more appropriate that they should do so because we don't all practice the same kinds of magic. Thanks for joining us. Be safe out there, everyone. there isn't much to illuminate on that, really. Um, I'm saying um a lot. This is the peril of not having written this out as notes to read from. Okay. Um. <laughs> Lots of ums. So, different word. <laughs>